The play occurs in two different locations. First, a bar. For the sake of this play, we see no other patrons. The woman is called Marie. She is seated and sipping a cocktail. The man is called Donnie. He enters and zeroes in on her. He takes a moment to gather his courage and then walks over to her as casually as he can muster, which is not all that casual. Hey. Hey, yourself. I uh, just saw you from across the room and, uh, you know. Uh, yes, I saw that you saw me. Oh, you saw that. I did. Well, can I uh, buy a drink? We now go to the conference room. You can tell that the scene has changed because of this bell sound. She is the attorney for Donnie. He is the attorney for Marie. <clears throat> Counselor? Well, well, well. We meet again. I hope you're better prepared for this negotiation, if for no other reason than for your client's sake. Oh, don't you worry about me. My client is in it to win it. Lovely. Shall we get to work? Of course. So your client is what? 38? 39? Why would that matter? <laughs> Over 40. Okay. 35. 35? Counselor, are we going to bargain in good faith or not? My client's age is not germane at this point in the talks. Fine. Withdrawn. Thank you. But if this negotiation is successful, my client expects full probity. My client wouldn't have it any other way. Good. If this negotiation is successful. Well, when you're ready for another, it's on me. I'll bear that in mind. I'm Don. Good faith? What do you mean? Don? Of course, my client's name is Donald. And for the record, his last name? Dak. Donald? Dak. Thank you, Counselor. Most everyone calls him Donnie, though. Including his mother? Yes. With whom he still lives. That is privileged information, Counselor. In the interest of transparency, I would advise your client to share that information willingly rather than it being discovered by my client. My client will take it under advisement. My name's Anne. <laughs> your brief clearly states your client's name is Marie. My client's middle name is Anne, and it's her policy to use that name when she meets someone that she's unsure of. The Supreme Court has ruled repeatedly in favor of aliases when there's potential abuse. Smith versus Jones, Doe versus Doe. Oh, so now my client is a potential abuser? Counselor, you are way off base here. Don't try to trip me up with word games, Counselor. The abuse I'm referring to is a potential invasion of privacy. My client is not a public figure, and as such, has a reasonable expectation of privacy. If and when my client may become comfortable with your client, it's perfectly ex reasonable to expect the exchange of legal names. Fine. For the record, what is your client's last name? Tonetti. Marie Ann Tonetti. Thank you, Counselor. So, Ann, do you come here often? Oh, well. Counselor, if your client is not serious about this meeting, then why are we here? My client is asking a perfectly honest question of your client. He is attempting to establish rapport. Oh, is that what they're calling it now? Well, I don't actually. This is my first time. It's nice though. Yeah, I like this place. I always meet really hot, I mean, interesting people here. No. Oh. So you're a regular then? Well, I'm not sure I'd say a regular. According to this report, your client has been here 24 times in the past month, leaving alone all 24 times. I would contend that since your client is yet to define the parameters of what a regular is, then my client's response is within the realm of honesty. So what do you do, Don? I manage his apartment at a large corporation. 
your client is in charge of keeping the packages of printer ink stocked at Staples. Staples is a large corporation and my client is in charge of his department. He's the only one in his department. He's efficient. What keeps you busy all day, Ann? I'm in marketing. <laughs> Telemarketing. Granted. So what do you do for fun other than charming and beguiling men like me? Oh, your client is skating perilously close to the edge, counselor. My client is sincere in his quest for information from your client. To what end, counselor? I think we both know, counselor. I would like it stipulated just the same. Although I believe that my client is still in discovery. So I think that the law gives him some leeway vis-a-vis -vis the stipulation of goals. This will not turn into a fishing expedition, counselor. Then perhaps your client should stay out of the pond, counselor. Well, I love the outdoors, camping, hiking, the beach. I will permit the beach without further comment, but hiking, camping? My client went camping with her brownie troop at age eight and learned how to treat a severe poison oak reaction from a fellow camper. Really? How? She pushed her friend, a one Christina Ginelli, into a huge patch of it while said friend was changing into her bathing suit. My client then had to help hold the girl down while the troop leader tried to clean out the cuts and scratches with a bottle of bourbon. And that was the last time camping? Until the next time my client goes camping again, yes. What about you? What do you do for fun? For a long time, my life pretty much centered around my fitness regimen. I'm only now trying to find some balance between working out and having a social life. Please, your client hasn't seen the inside of a gym since his high school prom. For your information, my client's prom was held at a Red Lobster. Well, it can be a difficult thing to balance. My job can be kind of stressful and really just trying to get out there and have some fun, let off steam. Well, you seem like you're a fun girl, a woman. You know what? I think I am a fun girl. I'm cooped up in that office all day, but getting out tonight was just what I needed. I'm glad I could be here for the fun. Mm, whoa, what the hell is that, counselor? Obviously, it's a sincere desire to establish a connection. Seriously? His hand is resting on her arm. My client believes that consent should be clear, enthusiastic, and ongoing. I don't see any reticence on your client's part. If this advance is unwelcome, then I would like to see either overt or subtle clues that would indicate your client's disinterest in a physical connection. Oh, yeah. Like any man you've ever represented has ever been able to pick up on any cue that's even the least bit subtle. Well, that is an unfair characterization, counselor. You think so? Yes. And furthermore, it is unreasonable to hold this client culpable for the previous failings of other men. And look, she has put her hand on his. <laughs> Maybe we should dance. Why not? Dangerous waters, counselor. I will grant you that, but my client is an honorable man. Honorable? His hand just slid down to my client's bottom while they're dancing. It is my belief that you are misreading this situation and that you are not negotiating on your client's best interests. Quite the contrary. I am advocating for a best interest. Sometimes a client doesn't always know best. You see, I don't think you and your client are on the same page here. She's obviously responding positively and reciprocating accordingly. Hmm. I will permit that my client operates of her own free will. My duty is to see that she's represented competently in this negotiation. I think our clients both want the same thing. I think that this negotiation isn't proceeding with as much rigor as my client deserves. <laughs> really? Because I don't see the benefit in a prolonged negotiation. Our clients have a mutual goal, obviously. It is our duty to iron out the details in a way that is mutually satisfying. I'm surprised that your client has any interest in what's satisfying to my client. You have not established precedent with my client, counselor, so I would appreciate it if you refrain from slandering him. Uh, withdrawn. Apologies, counselor. Accepted. So, we say we take this party elsewhere? 
What did you have in mind? We'll go out to the parking lot, look at the star. Okay, it sounds good. Let's move on, shall we? <clears throat> Physical contact. Uh, above the waist, over the shirt. Option for adjustments in the process? A counselor, if you're looking for a blank check, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Not at all, counselor. Just an admission that life moves quickly and we must remain adaptable. Adaptable? As in what, exactly? That indefinable, in-the-moment decision that can alter the course of one's life for the better. Spoken like someone representing a man. How so? Those in the moment decisions often have far more consequences for women than they do for men. Counselor, I must caution you again about attempting to establish precedent in cases unrelated to my client. Will you accept that a pattern exists in the abstract that women typically bear the brunt of the fallout from a rush to intimacy? But my client is not on trial for an abstract pattern. You're being clever again, Counselor. This is a negotiation, not a trial. Fine. Can we discuss the parameters of what happens after the parking lot? After? Who says there's an after? It's a beautiful night. Are you cold? Uh, here, you can wear my jacket. Thanks. You're warm. Do you mind if I snuggle a little? Not at all. Thanks. I'd like to kiss you. I'd like that. See? Now they're kissing each other. I can see. Hmm. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, wow. <laughs> I'm not cold anymore. Me neither. So? So, what now? You know, would you like, like to come back, come back to my place? place? Wait, what? what did you say? What did he say? Oh, you heard them both, counselor. This is exactly what I was talking about. The law cannot be only reason, free from passion. Oh, did you get your law degree from the University of Legally Blonde? <laughs> I'm surprised you know that movie. Oh, Reese Witherspoon is a damn national treasure. Indeed, counselor. How about your place? I can make us some drinks. Oh? Make a mean Manhattan. Sounds perfect. Does your client actually have any of the ingredients to make that cocktail? Let it go, counselor. These two have hit it off. Understood. So, shall we discuss the parameters of the impending encounters? Uh, my client will agree to be um, mildly awkward and cautious. My client counters with over-enthusiastic coupled with rudimentary technique. Mm, I cannot sign off on that. My client requires advanced technique. Ooh, fine. What does my client get in return if he rises to the occasion? Uh, we can agree to a uh, decreasing amount of awkwardness as arousal increases. Good. <laughs> with the caveat that the total cessation of awkwardness is contingent upon a prodigious ability by your client. Why is the burden being shifted to my client solely? Because that's how this works. Fine. My client demands encouragement when appropriate. My client prefers silent and subtle signals. <laughs> that's not going to fly. My client needs vocal assurance and pleas to the deity of your client's choice when things are proceeding toward a uh, mutually beneficial resolution. We can agree to vocal encouragement, but draw the line at profanity. Is it acceptable for my client to use mild profanity? Yes. There are only two words that would cause my client to cease the encounter. I can't say them, but here they are as exhibit one. Well, yeah, of course. This first one is as obvious to you as it is to me. My client would never use that word, I assure you. That's good to know. My client would view the use of that word as irreparable damage to any future assassination. Wait, what's, what's the second one? Your client doesn't want to be known as a, a slat? Uh, that, that's a you. 
Understood. Okay. Positions. Ah, uh, I think the standard positions apply here. It's their first time together. Nobody wants to pull groin. Fine. Any prohibitions? My client dislikes ear nibbling. Perfectly acceptable. My client is not prone to that anyhow. Any other limitations? You're seriously overreaching. Of course there are. I feel that I must remind you that my client is already giving more than propriety and her Catholic upbringing would normally allow. A passionate compromise is not a surrender. Do not push your luck, counselor. Catholic, huh? Ah, it is against our code of ethics to employ tactics that bring religious guilt or rebellion into a negotiation of physical intimacy. You swore an oath, damn it. Acceded to, Counselor. I was merely making a note of your client's religious preference with uh, regards to any subsequent potential relationship hurdles. Yeah, sure you were. Well, shall we? Yeah, definitely. Donnie and Marie exit looking lustfully into each other's eyes. Let's discuss what happens after. <laughs> after? <laughs> after, my client would like to go to sleep. If the union was satisfactory, that would be acceptable to my client. No? And if your client is not satisfied? Then, some kind of recompense is in order. This could take the form of cuddling, spooning, or talking. Would a second attempt at satisfaction be acceptable? <laughs> if your client is able, I see no problem with that. But my client would also assume that the law of diminishing returns in that attempt may apply. For the sake of argument, let's say the encounter was um, mutually satisfying in such a way that neither felt any complaint. How much time must elapse before my client can vacate your client's place of residence? For the sake of argument, let's say that the encounter begins around midnight. My client regards anything less than eight hours from the commencement of intimacy to your client disembarking from the premises to be unacceptable. Eight hours? This is non-negotiable. My client will agree to make breakfast in the morning, however. Care to specify what kind of breakfast? For an unsatisfactory encounter, a cup of coffee and a box of cereal will be proffered. The coffee will be brewed in standard fashion. The cereal will be pointed out and offered half-heartedly. <laughs> For a satisfactory encounter, a breakfast of scrambled eggs and bacon is considered equitable. And if your client's world gets rocked? <laughs> right. <laughs> your client can have no expectation of the result until the encounter actually occurs. Therefore, I believe that all possible outcomes must be considered. Fine. In the unlikely event of my client's world being rocked or even significantly swayed, the morning meal will consist of a brunch featuring omelets made to order, poached salmon, a choice of bagels, and a freshly made fruit salad. The contents of said brunch will necessitate a trip to the grocery store to which your client must accompany my client. Your client must also help in the preparation of said brunch. That is acceptable. <clears throat> All right. I think that's everything. Sign, please. Normally, I would want to run this by the boss first, but your terms are within the parameters of expectations set forth by my client when he went out tonight. Do you require notarization? I won't insist in this case. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Counselor. A pleasure, Counselor. Well, it's been nice working with you. Would you like to get a drink? I know a great little place. Oh yeah? Are you regular there? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say a regular. <laughs> Lights out. End of play.